testing the fire. Happy Pentecost! <laughs> there we go! Thank you, Sally! Thank you! We've got our fire. We're ready to celebrate. Thank you to Jennifer Hill Anderson. Thank you to Kim um, for immediately lighting our hearts up and walking in um, to the sanctuary and preparing for worship this morning. We gather this morning as we do every morning, Sunday morning, to remember that we serve a living God, to remember that no matter what has happened or what has failed to happen in this past week, there is a God who is working to bring forth life from death and wholeness from brokenness. This is our good news, and it is a delight to celebrate it with you, with all of the, you joining us online. And as you are coming in, I've noticed um, we've had a lot of people share their prayers. Those of you who are here on Yellow Sheets, um, for those of you joining us online, please feel free to leave that in the comment section or uh, text me directly at 612-449-9405. 612-449-9405. And then as well, for those of you who are coming in, uh, we have an offering basket there in the back and we will um, be offering prayers. Um, and thank you for all that you give to make the ministries here at Glendale possible. All right, so let's rise in body or in spirit and join in the call to worship this amazing morning. All who are led by God's Spirit are children of God. We did not receive a spirit of slavery to lead us back again into fear. We received a spirit that shows we are adopted as God's children. With this spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. But if we are children, we are also heirs. We are God's heirs and fellow heirs with Christ, if we really suffer with him so that we can also be glorified with him. Words from Paul. Let us join together in continuing to sing.
Almighty God, without you, we can do no good thing. May your spirit make us wise. May your spirit guide us. May your spirit renew us. May your spirit strengthen us so that we will be strong in faith, discerning in proclamation, courageous in witness, persistent in good deeds. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As Carl is coming up to read scripture, I just have to thank you all for waving the fire because with the crepe paper, it actually sounds like fire. It's all crackling and really fun. Good morning. Today's reading is from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. Pentecost. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven, like, a, the, fierce, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house while they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the, as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all these people that are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Fli no, Pamphylia, <laughs> Egypt and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and I think, yes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they are full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pentecost is one of my favorite Sundays and also um, a very common scripture that we all know. Um, and so instead of uh, doing a sermon once more on how this is the completion of the story of the Tower of Babel, how there is a scattering of humanity and of language and of lack of understanding, and how this is the moment where all of those different languages come in together in understanding, right? And we notice that it's not that everyone speaks the same language again, that would be a kingdom of dominion, of domination, but it's that everyone understands each other, each in their full essence of all of those different languages. There's power and there's beauty there. And where I really want us to focus on today is the very first line that Carl read. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. And when we say all together, what number do you immediately picture in your head? 
when you're thinking of, okay, I'll just share for me, when I was thinking of the disciples, I would picture 12, the 12 apostles, because they had, you know, replaced Judas and come together. But if we go back to the first chapter um, of Acts, they are talking about after watching Jesus be taken up into heaven, um, the they, we'll get to the they in the minute, return to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they entered the city, they went to the upstairs room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, Alphaeus' son, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, James's son, all were united in their devotion to prayer, along with some women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. During this time, the family of believers was a company of about 120 persons. And so when it says that they were all together in one place, it's that all 120 persons that included the disciples, but included women, and included Jesus' family, a company of about 120. And when Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. And they saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. When we celebrate the birthday of the church at Pentecost, it's not just the sending of the disciples, of the apostles out to preach the good news, to baptize in God's names, to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It's a moment for each and every single follower of Jesus Christ. It's a moment for that company of all 120 as they are filled and as they are sent to become the church and to become the movement that will grow throughout the ages to us here celebrating this moment today. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> I want to have a moment of fire. And so in light of this, I would love for you to join me in a guided meditation of thinking what it would, might have been like to be one of those 120. So get comfortable, wiggle around, get your fire going, and then settle in um, to a good space. And all you have to do is follow the instructions given and give yourself permission to be creative and to think beyond what we might usually associate with this story. I'm not going to ask you to get up or go anywhere, so take a deep breath there. This is all an internal bit, but I hope that you play with it and think and find and open yourself up to what might be a deeper understanding of this day and picturing yourself there with 120. So, if you can, place both feet flat on the floor and get in that good meditation posture of making your back straight but relax. Make sure your shoulders aren't inching up in stress or anxiety. Close your eyes. Concentrate on your breathing. For a little while, take inhales of three counts, hold for five, and then exhale for seven. Breath can be a reminder of God's spirit. Remember that you are in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit is within you. Ask God to open your heart and your imagination. Remember that room we just talked about where the 120 disciples were gathered? 
Place yourself there with them, doing what Jesus told you to do, waiting for Holy Spirit. How do you wait? Are you talking with someone? Sitting alone? Singing? Praying? Reading scripture? Meeting needs? Staying quiet? Being loud? Organizing others? Is your body still? or active. What does this sacred waiting, holding vigil, look like for you? The waiting is turning into days. Jesus said, in only a few days, you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. What if you missed it? What if the baptism doesn't happen? Then what? What if the authorities, the Romans, find you first? What if they crucify you? Everyone keeps waiting. Peter is even organizing to find a replacement for Judas. What do you think about that? Do you think the movement has a chance? What part of you is hopeful and excited? And what part of you is scared and worried? And how is your body and soul holding the tension between the two? Jesus' mother, Mary, is here too. Have you gotten to be with her at all? She knew Jesus better than perhaps anyone else. After all, she risked everything while he was waiting to be born. And now, as the church is waiting to be born, she is here again. She's met Holy Spirit. She's lived in this beautiful and tortured world of promise before. Listen to her. What is she saying? Suddenly, feels like out of nowhere, a big noise, a noise louder than you've ever heard before, comes sweeping through the room. No, 
No, not just the room. It's as if it's sweeping through you, like your very bones are shaking with it. It looks like Peter is talking, but you can't hear him anymore. Wait, can you, can you even breathe anymore? How does it feel as it fills your body? Are there chills starting at the base of your spine and traveling up your back to your shoulders? Are there chills moving down your arms and into your fingers, down your legs, past your knees, into your toes? These chills, do you feel them? Are you cold? Or is this it? Is this the moment you've been waiting for? Is this what Holy Spirit feels like? You didn't realize you had your eyes closed until all of a sudden the brightness comes even past your eyelids as it feels like there's been a flame of fire above you dancing in the air. And then you can see it. You can look at it because it's splitting and it's not one big big mass of light, but there are small flames wiggling and flashing above the head of every person in the room, all 120 of you. Is there one above me? It doesn't burn you, but it comes with an intensity you can't put words to. This has to be Holy Spirit. Nothing else could have this much power. Overflowing from your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, everything is so alive. Was this version of me inside me all the time? Is this how Jesus felt all the time? Yep, this is Holy Spirit. Jesus promised to send her, and she is here. Something inside of you is definitely different. What does this difference make you want to do? There's clearly no going back now, not after knowing this. You see some of the disciples going outside. Will you go with them? It doesn't seem like anyone is afraid anymore. What will you tell the crowds about Jesus? How do you want to use this power that Holy Spirit has given you? This is the end of our meditation. Scroll back through the experience. Hold on to a feeling or a thought or an image that has come to mind that you want to hold close and tuck away for thinking of and praying over later.
open your eyes as you wish. Come back to the present time in your own time. Know that Holy Spirit is here too. Just look at the way this sanctuary is inviting us to remember her presence. Holy Spirit is with you wherever you go. What will you do with such power? What will you do with the taste of what it means to be free as God is free? Before we close with a prayer, is there anything that anybody wants to share or shout out? All right, then as we pray together, get those flames of fire wiggling above your heads, you 120 disciples. This prayer was written by a group of campers a few years ago when we did this meditation together. Thank you for bringing us here this morning, God. Thank you for all the different ways you present yourself to us. Thank you for the different perspectives everyone has and how they give us the ability to understand you and others. Please help everyone to learn how to communicate with you and others teaching us how to share your grace. Amen.
as Mike brings our offerings forward, um, we will be praying over them. Lord, work through us and our gifts, so that what comes to us as seed goes forth as flower, and what comes to us as flower goes forth as fruit. Amen. All right. There we go. Yay. <laughs> All right. And so part of what's beautiful in gathering at the communion table is that we gather with the saints who have gone before us and the community um, of disciples all around the world that are walking um, with us now. And so as we prepare to go into this communion liturgy, we go knowing that there are all of those who are gathering in with us. And so we're going to lift those prayers together this morning. We join Betty Blazer in praying for her son Shane, Tiffany, and family. They're moving to North Carolina this week, and so may they be safe in their travels and settling into their new home. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. We also pray for Raymond and Vonda Olson uh, recovering from COVID. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. We pray for Dorothy Nicholas that her pain may continue to decrease and her walking may increase as she continues to heal. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. And we join in prayers of joy with Kay Dunning for her mother's June Haas's 88th birthday today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, should, we should do a flame wiggle on behalf of June. Yes, there we go. There we go. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayers. Oh, and then we give thanks and prayers for Mason's, um, Dale and Sally's grandson's 21st birthday today. So let's do another flame wiggle for Mason's. <laughs> Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. And then prayers uh, for healing and pain relief um, for John Kammer, who is miserable with shingles. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's send some Holy Spirit healing towards John Way because that pain is the worst. Lord, in your love, near our prayers. And Kim, we're, we've, got, we've got more flame to do. Prayers of joy and thanksgiving for a new grandbaby, a grandson, Isaac Jen Benjamin. Wow, that is a name to live into. Isaac Benjamin, born Friday um, to Dylan and Amanda Peterson. So congratulations, Grandma, and yay. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. Yes. What? Oh, you got outed. You got outed. All right, flame throwing for Kim's birthday, too. Woohoo! Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. Oh, that's going to be fun. You're going to have a grandbaby to celebrate with. <laughs> and then we also join in prayer for all of the people of Ukraine who are still suffering um, from the oppression of war. Um, for, and for all families um, of all of those who have died because of gun violence. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Let's raise those Holy Spirit flames once more. And God, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on these families and that you do what only you can do. Bring forth life from death and wholeness from brokenness. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray and keep in mind and keep those flames going as we think about our homebound members, June Haas, June Huss, Dwayne Meyer, Raymond Olson, and um, and then our brother who has passed, Jim Ross. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. God, we thank you for welcoming Jim into your community of saints and that we pray the arms of your Holy Spirit around him 
and around Susan and all of the family as you connect them from this side of the river to the next. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. And we pray for continued healing for John Scarbalis, Lucy Schulteis, Sana Bruce, Steve Peterson, and continue prayers for Carl Brown and his family at the passing of his mother. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. Are there other prayers that you would like to share? And Ash, any other prayers from online or Mona? Lord, for the prayers that remain unspoken on our hearts, send those same flames of power and of love to transform the heaviness and bring forth life. For the battles that are being fought that we don't even know about, Holy Spirit, come and bring, be present, bringing your power and your strength. And it is with these prayers in our hearts and in our souls. It is knowing that you are present for every good day and for every bad day, for every joy and for every moment that breaks our hearts. We bring all of that to you as we come to this table. Yeah. Joined together in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, we gather around this table in order to embody the hope we have for the kingdom of God. Miren qué bueno es cuando estamos juntos. Es el Señor que ha hecho todo esto. Qué maravilla poder verlo hoy. We come as we are, some radiating your resurrection glory, some still trapped in the shadow of Good Friday. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Call from tomorrow so our women see vision and our men dream dreams. Cantaremos tu nuevo canto en el mundo. Hablaremos en tu nueva lengua del pueblo. Seguiremos tu nuevo camino que para todo el mundo. For it will not be in the proclamations of world parliaments, nor in the brutality of war that our world will be saved. Rather, it will be in the simple routines of life, such as breaking bread and sharing the cup, that we will recognize your fullness in each other. La noche en la que él se entregó por nosotros, tomó pan, y habiendo dado gracias, lo partió y lo dio a sus discípulos, y dijo, Tomad, comed. Este es mi cuerpo que es dado por ustedes. Haz, haced esto en memoria de mí. When the supper was over, you took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to your disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood and the, of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You who are, I am who I am. Teach us to be who we are. Derrama tu Santo Espíritu sobre los que estamos aquí y sobre estos dones de pan y vino. Haz que sean para nosotros el cuerpo y la sangre de Cristo para que seamos el cuerpo de Cristo para el mundo, redimidos por su sangre. By the power of your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, Por nuestro Salvador, quien mostró en su muerte la vida puede más. With the Holy Spirit in your holy church. A ti sea en todo honor y gloria Dios omnipotente ahora y siempre. Amén. We take this bread. And remember that we serve a Savior who is whole, but who chose to become broken, so that we who are broken might be made whole. A Savior who is full, but who chose to empty himself, 
so that we who are empty may be filled. This is the good news that redeems us, that sets us free, and that makes the impossible possible, life from death and wholeness from brokenness. So in this love and in this power, let us join our hearts and wiggle that fire as together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you are able, um, come on up. We have bread to dip in the cup, and we'll do that for you. Um, and then we have a gluten-free uh, chalice set up here as well. Diane, the body of Christ, broken for you. Sandy, the body of Christ, broken for you. Denise, the body of Christ, broken for you. Leona, the body of Christ, broken for you. Barbara, the body of Christ, broken for you. Larry, the body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. Carl, the body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. Ron, the body of Christ, broken for you. Lois, the body of Christ, broken for you. Don, the body of Christ, broken for you. <laughs> Shelly, the body of Christ, broken for you. Ron, the body of Christ, broken for you. Carolyn, the body of Christ, broken for you. Steve, the body of Christ, broken for you. Janice, the body of Christ, broken for you. Bob, the body of Christ, broken for you. Darlene, the body of Christ, broken for you. Sally, the body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. Dale, the body of Christ, broken for you. Nancy, the body of Christ, broken for you. Aubrey, this means that God loves you more than anything. Remember that. Marcia, the body of Christ, broken for you. Linda, the body of Christ, broken for you. Scott, the body of Christ, broken for you. Linda, the body of Christ, broken for you. Philip, the body of Christ, broken for you. Grace, the body of Christ, broken for you. Mona, the body of Christ, broken for you. Mary, the body of Christ, broken for you. Ariam, the body of Christ, broken for you. You're back, Cassandra, the body of Christ, broken for you. body of Christ broken for you. Jim, the body of Christ broken for you. Marissa, the body of Christ broken for you. All right.
right, Thaddeus. This means that God loves you more than anything. Remember that. Yeah, it is yay. <laughs> oh, no, I dropped the body. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I appreciate the extra help. Jen, the body of Christ, broken for you. Mason, the body of Christ, broken for you. Kay, the body of Christ, broken for you. Mary, the body of Christ, broken for you. Brian, the body of Christ, Amen. broken for you. Scott, the body of Christ, broken for you. Ash, the body of Christ, broken for you. Cindy, the body of Christ, broken for you. Dee Dee, the body of Christ, broken for you. It's so good to see you again. Remind me of your name, Beth. Beth, the body of Christ, broken for you. Does your, okay, does your pup want, okay. okay. The body of Christ, broken for you. Jim, the body of Christ, broken for you. Ross, the body of Christ, broken for you. Barb, the body of Christ, broken for you. Linda, the body of Christ, broken for you. Mike, the body of Christ, broken for you. Kim, the body of Join in singing one of my favorite songs as we think of Holy Spirit.
What a salvation story we're a part of. It's pretty beautiful. Thank you for all of those who left your contact information um, and signed in just in case we have a COVID outbreak and need to notify you. And then visitors, we'd love to extend a fuller welcome to you. And for those here in person, we have a, a sign-up sheet where you can leave your um, email or phone number at the back. And then for those of you online, please again, send me a direct text or a direct message and we'd love to follow up and extend a fuller welcome to you later in this coming week. Tomorrow, please join us for Jim Ross's service of death and resurrection. The visitation will be at 1 p.m. and the service at 2 p.m. And I wanna thank all of you who have already uh, made plans to be here to help for Ash and Mason who are working to be able to live stream this. It's turning into a very large service. So thank you to Diane for helping to coordinate the reception and everyone working with her. It's um, quite the honor to be able to give this space for one who has served for so long. So thank you. We've got, we've got folks, folks flying in from California and multiple carpools happening. So thank you for being a part of this moment. As we are preparing, um, the biggest thing that we need in order to be able to open the nursery again and be ready for a lock-in on the 17th and a mission trip on July 17th and then classes in the fall is for everyone to get their um, background check and safe gathering training complete. Um, so any adult working with children and youth um, and vulnerable adults, this is needed for those of you who have done this before y'all did it together in 2018 and 2022 is that third year and as of now only Mike Schultz is certified to work with children and youth and vulnerable adults so we are needing to do a whole big moment of this um, we'll be sending out emails, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, but also, I know um, there have been some troubles uh, getting that online program to work. And so we will be here um, June 15th, that Wednesday, from 7 to 9 p.m. So bring your laptop with you, or if you need one, let us know, and we'll supply one from the church. And Meredith Samuelson, um, who's a licensed parent and family education educator will be here to help us and she is the one um, that we have received funds for the conference to bring in and help us set up our children and youth programming through the summer and into the fall so that when we give you a call to consider becoming a teacher and a team of four you will have support and you won't be doing it alone our summer is happening, um, so this coming week is Nathan Graba's graduation party on June 10th, and all are welcome. And then, Ross, did you want to say anything else? Wonderful. All right. So for the church family on June 10th and then June 15th, we'll have a bonfire with hot dogs and s'mores from six to seven. And then July 24th is Abby Scarbalis' graduation party. And then again in September, we're planning a camp out vacation Bible school before rally Sunday. Um, so if you are graduating or have a graduate in your family, please email me those names because we will be putting together a graduation Sunday here coming up. And as we are getting ready to go into coffee hour, um, Cassandra, may I ask you to raise your hand? Um, this is my jealousy speaking. Cassandra is back from a trip to the Galapagos for school. Um, so she would be a great person to find during coffee hour um, to see how it went and what the tortoises are like. Would you rise in body or in, oh, no, I have one more announcement. Um, Dwayne Meyer is at, um, not St. Francis, at St. Gertrude's by St. Francis, and he's really lonely. 
and really wanting visits. Um, so if you are able to visit Dwayne, um, he's really fun to talk to and it can only happen in person because of his hearing trouble over the phone. Um, so Dwayne, um, so Jim has just visited him. So Jim or myself can give you the information and it'd be really wonderful to get some visits in to him. Thank you. All right, let's rise in body or in spirit as a fire is meant for burning. So the church. Go forward this Pentecost Sunday full of the power of God's Holy Spirit to reflect the radiance of God's new and glorious dawn. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. <laughs>